So I am Craig Drabeck. I'm the technical lead for TXMQ. I'm here to present uh, Cryptocurrency 101. We're going to have a look at uh, Cryptocurrency on Hedera. We're going to talk about the APIs, and we're actually going to see some code, um, which is pretty cool. Jeans and t-shirt means code. Um, cool. So uh, yeah, what, what we're going to cover. So the roles that cryptocurrency plays on Hedera, you've heard some of this already from uh, Lehman especially this morning. Uh, we'll talk about some basic concepts on Hedera, your sort of building block objects, accounts, keys, signatures, how transactions actually work in practice. Um, we'll take a look at the APIs themselves. And then we're going to talk about uh, an interesting use case that's really well enabled on Hedera, where on previous technologies, um, you would need a smart contract or some kind of orchestration layer off-chain service to really uh, make these kinds of transactions happen. So why do we need a cryptocurrency on Hedera? A um, couple of reasons. First of all, security. Um, we heard about this earlier today. Uh, to a greater level of detail, but the cryptocurrency has a really important role in securing the network. Um, it provides economic disincentive to bad behavior and economic incentive for good behavior. So uh, nodes need to be staked uh, in order to join the network. You can't just spin up uh, some compute somewhere and start joining it to the network um, to try to perpetrate some kind of consensus-based attack by uh, possessing an overwhelming amount of network nodes. Um, your node vote is weighted by stake, and there are mechanisms for average everyday people with a few H bars in their wallet to proxy their stake, their currency, onto a node uh, to participate in consensus. Um, transaction fees also help to discourage some flood based type attacks, denial of services. Uh, there is an economic cost to each of those transactions, and so that also provides a bit of a barrier to uh, some of those attacks. And I think very importantly, it, in, it encourages those of us who are developers to really be efficient in how we use the network resources. Uh, our smart contracts will be built based on how complex they are to execute. And uh, so by being efficient with how we use those resources and how we code, uh, we make our apps cheaper to run on the network. So long-term costs can come down. Uh, incentivizing participation. Uh, Lehman really did a great job of covering the fees and how they're assessed and who they go to. Um, I'm not going to rehash that, but nodes and uh, people staking currency on the nodes, they do receive payments, portions of payments, uh, to contribute to the operation of the network. And again, incentivize people to keep the network alive, right? Because if people aren't making money running nodes. They won't run nodes anymore. Without nodes, there's no network. Uh, finally, and probably most uh, interesting and very exciting is micropayments. I think Hedera really, for the first time, is enabling micropayments at scale in a way that's very secure, very reliable. Um, the technology really hasn't been quite there yet to enable micropayments. Um, and there are just a number of interesting use cases. Patrick spoke through some of these. I thought it was really interesting to see um, his vision of going to a news site, right? Who's gone to a news site and just been like, uh, you're covered in pop-ups, there's ads everywhere. Wouldn't it be great if we could pay as we go for fractions of a cent to consume content and not have to be bombarded with advertising all the time? All right, so let's talk about some basic concepts that you're going to need to really make use of the API. Um, let's start with a Hedera account. So coming from other uh, blockchains, distributed ledgers, you may be used to the account as just basically being your public key. So essentially, you have a key pair, your private key signs transactions, your public key identifies you on the network. Um, on Hedera, the account is a bit more complex and offers a lot of additional features. Um, so your account is going to consist of an identifier. It's a uh, three integer um, structure, shard realm and account ID. The account ID is generated by the network when the account is created. Um, the key or keys associated with an account, so Hedera is a natively multi-signature technology. Um, and you can actually structure keys um, in complex orders and uh, with complex data structures and require that 
signatures match those keys. Um, you can define thresholds on the account for when records are automatically created. So a record includes a state proof to prove later on that the network did what you asked it to when you asked it to do it. Um, and there's a threshold for when the recipient of a, count of a transaction, a transfer, must countersign in order for that transaction to go through. So if you're transferring or having a large amount of money coming into your account, uh, you'll want to countersign for that maybe you can require that right on your account. Um, accounts also have an auto renew period. There is a fee to maintain an account. So your account will uh, be closed if it can't afford to pay its fee. And uh, every so often that fee is required by the network. Uh, keys, again, a little bit more complicated, but offering a lot of additional functionality. I actually think that this is, is one of the killer features that we're going to find in Hedera is, is how it handles keys on your account and signatures on transactions. So we can accept keys in three different formats. Um, a smart contract can act as a key for signing transactions. Um, we can create lists of keys on an account, two, basically two kinds of key lists. Uh, one is a simple key list where you have X number of keys in order to process a transaction. All of those keys need to sign the transaction. Um, you can use something called a threshold key list, which is similar, but instead of requiring all of the keys, you only need a certain number of them, three of five, a majority vote, six of 10, et cetera, however you want to set that up. Um, and what's really cool is we can start to nest that into a structure. So you can actually have a key which is a threshold key list which contains lists of keys and threshold key lists, et cetera. Um, I think this is really interesting because you can start to model on your transactions and in your digital signatures the decision-making and approval processes that went into generating that transaction. So in order for you to run the transaction on the network, you have to get the, the uh, transaction signed um, by keys that match that particular key structure and the constraints on that account. So you've actually self-documented um, the fact that all of the parties that need to sign off on something in a business sense have signed off on that transaction in a digital sense. Um, as I mentioned, signatures uh, must match the key structure that's on the account. So if you have a single key, probably 999 out of 1,000 transactions on Hedera will be a single key. Uh, your transaction needs to be signed by that key, traditional key signing. Uh, transactions for a list of keys require all key signatures. Transactions for a threshold key list require N of M to sign the transaction. Um, and signatures for nested key structures need to match that key structure in order for the network to accept the transaction. Um, so finally, just uh, a bit of a deep dive into the mechanics of a transaction. Your client, your application, your dApp um, is going to build a transaction locally. Um, it's responsible for getting it signed, so all of those keys in whatever structure you need to acquire those keys. Uh, you do that on the client, you sign the transaction, there are methods in the uh, SDK that help you do that. Um, the client submits the transaction to the network, so at that point we've submitted to a local node. The local node will pre-check the transaction to make sure that everything looks okay based on the information it has before it sends it on to the network. So at that time, you're going to get a pre-check result back from the node that you're submitting the transaction to, and it will tell you, yes, everything looks great, I've sent your transaction along, or no, everything doesn't look great, I'm sending this back to you to fix some problems before I send it to the network. Um, you can also get the cost of your transaction at that time, so if you want to pre-check how much your transaction will cost, you can do that at that point. Um, assuming is everything is okay, the node submits that to the network for uh, consensus. It sends you back your pre-check result. The network picks up the transaction, puts it in consensus order, applies that transaction to state, um, generates receipts or records. Lehman spoke a little bit about uh, records offering state proofs to later on prove that the network did uh, what it said it was going to do. Um, so on the client side, then, you need to pull the node. And again, there's a helper method in the SDK to help you do this. You don't have to set up your own 
uh, delay loop to do this, but uh, you need to check the, uh, the node you submitted to, or any node really, for your record or your receipt in order to find out whether your transaction succeeded or failed. Uh, if you have submitted a transaction that creates something like an account or a file, you will have um, the identifier for that account or file in your receipt or record. All right, so let's talk about the cryptocurrency API. Uh, the API operations, there are a number of them. Um, your account management operations create, delete an account. You can update some of the information on the account, the thresholds we spoke about earlier. Uh, you can, of course, transfer funds from one account to another account. Uh, proxy staking, which is the process of taking your uh, coin and staking it on a node to add to that uh, node's uh, stake for consensus. And uh, claims, which um, somebody covered earlier, I believe it was Lehman, uh, a claim is a way to actually attach a hash so a third party, uh, especially in a know your customer type situation, would do some check, uh, create a certification, a bit of data, a document, something, um, hash that, and apply that hash to your account as a way to attest that you have a certain attribute, certification, et cetera. So to create an account, you actually need another account. Uh, create account is a transaction that has a fee. Uh, the, the funding account must pay the fee. Uh, the account number gets generated by the network. And the account is associated with a shard and realm on the network. Although payments across shards and realms are uh, allowed, they are a feature. Um, my understanding is that transactions within a shard and realm are, are faster. Uh, deleting an account, we can delete account. An account, we can provably delete an account on Hedera. I don't think we can do that anywhere else. Um, so the delete is a soft delete to enable us to create state proofs, uh, generate records of that deletion. Um, the account itself, I don't believe, goes away until it can no longer auto-renew. Uh, your account will go away if it can't pay its auto-renewal fee. All right, so um, let's see some code. So we're going we're gonna to create an account here. Uh, this is actually just a snippet of a JUnit test. Um, so up at the top, we are generating something called a query default. Query default um, is a default set of parameters. It, it includes which node you're going to submit to, which account is paying for the transaction, your key pair, uh, et cetera. So we are going to um, set up the paying account and code. We're going to ask the network for that account's information. We'll get its balance and its thresholds, and we'll dump that out to the screen. On the right, um, we will create a new account using that initial account as the paying account. And again, we will query the information for that account and dump it out. So let's run that. And you can see it's uh, tracing out um, the query is the information it's sending to the network and back, and we've got our results. So our funding account number 1002, what its balance is, thresholds that we've set on it, et cetera. Uh, we've created a new account, and we get back our new account info. So um, it looks like a fair amount of code. A lot of it is generating output. Um, so it, it is a relatively easy process to, uh, to generate a new account and code. All right, so um, you can retrieve the balance for your account. Uh, you can transfer funds, which we're going to see in a minute. Um, and you can also add or revoke claims on the account. So let's have a look at code for transferring. Oh, sorry, getting ahead of myself. Uh, transfer lists. Transfer lists, I think, are also really cool and a really uh, sort of hidden gem in how Hedera is approaching payments. So you don't have to have an atomic payment one person to one person. Um, there are a lot of use cases where you're looking at uh, payments where the facilitator for that service is charging a transaction fee, taking a cut, or you may have uh, a process where you're distributing rewards among multiple participants. We can actually do that in one transaction with a transfer list. So we can mix and match payers and payees in a transaction. Uh, the asterisk on the account limit is because I believe that's still under uh, 
some discussion, how many accounts you're actually going to be allowed. I think the current limit is 10. Uh, really, the restriction is that it has to be zero sum. So the amount of money that comes out of accounts has to go back into some other account. All right, so let's see a transfer transaction. So again, the, the top section is uh, familiar from the last demo. Um, we're setting up our paying account, uh, setting its defaults, which node we're going to submit to, who's paying. Um, we'll retrieve the uh, info for that account again, um, and then uh, set up our recipient account. And if you can roll that and just pause like four seconds in, it will scroll down and stop there. So this bit at the bottom here is really where we're sending our 1H bar. And if you remember back to the description of how uh, the transaction history or transaction life cycle works, uh, source account.send, the transfer result is our pre-check result. If the pre-check result is OK, then we're going to use uh, an SDK utility to pull the node to get our receipt. Once we have the receipt, that call returns synchronously, asynchronous in the background, but it will block your code until it returns the record or receipt. Um, we'll be able to determine if we have success or failure on that transaction. So let's let that run and see what that looks like. And again, we can see output trace of what's going over the wire. And we have our results. Um, so again, we've queried the information on the uh, sending account. We've transferred one uh, fraction of an H bar. So um, the, the native currency in the API is some fraction of an H bar that is yet to be determined. Um, and the result is account 1003 now has eight H bars in it because I ran this demo eight times in order to get it right for the video. All right, so um, let's take a look at something that is really cool that uh, we can do with Hedera just in single transaction. Uh, let's sell Pied Piper to Huli um, before you boo, I know. Um, so Pied Piper is a small company. There's only a handful of major players. There's only a handful of people to collect votes on. Uh, Huli is a big company. There's a whole bureaucracy to get approval on to do an acquisition like this. What's really interesting is we can model that entire sale with two accounts in one transaction using um, a crypto transfer and uh, the account, the signature setups on the accounts. So for Pied Piper, we set up a threshold key list. We get keys for Richard, Monica, Jared, Dinesh, and Guilfoyle, and it's a majority rule if three of the five say yay then the sale will go through. So we set up that three, uh, threshold key list, set a threshold of three, five keys in the list. The Pied Piper side is relatively easy. Um, the Huli side, again, much more complicated. So uh, Gavin needs to sign off on it. The CFO needs to sign off on it. There's a risk management department. Um, and it needs a board vote. So the board's vote is majority. So we set up a threshold key list for one key for each board seat. Um, and we set a simple majority threshold on that key list. We can set up risk as a key list, so all of the partners in the risk area have to all sign off on that transaction. CEO and CFO get keys individually, and uh, we, we put that into a structure and add that to the account. So unless all of those things happen, Unless you get three of five Pied Piper, unless Gavin signs, unless the CFO signs, unless all of those things happen, the transaction won't be accepted by the network. So again, going back to the idea of the account and the keys, keys and signatures on the account modeling and documenting the decision and approval process, we've actually documented the approval process for a corporate sale just using two accounts in one transaction, which I think is pretty cool. All right, that's the uh, crypto APIs. Um, if anybody has any questions about how to use them, I'm happy to help. I'm at TXMQ's booth in the back. Be here all day. Thanks. <laughs>